Hey there, I'm Shannon Reber, and this is Genres Bookshop Podcast, and today I am being interviewed by a fellow writer named Linda Levid, who is the reason that I am an indie author. Linda. What? Yeah. Hey, Shannon, how are you? How are you? Very good, very good. Um, you so doing? I, oh, can I start talking? Or am I going to talk over you? No. Okay. No. Uh, I've been watching Shannon's um, videos, her podcasts, or whatever their video casts, or whatever Zoom meetings. I'm not sure what you call them, and I've been enjoying them. And I said, "Well, we don't know anything about Shannon," so I figured I'll contact her and say, uh, "Let's let's get down with Shannon, you know? Let's find out about the girl." Yeah, and, that um, sounds really weird. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, so Shannon and I, I was thinking, you know, going down memory lane. Mm -hmm. uh, with us and we met at the farmer's market here yes, in Westfield yes. um, and we uh, we talked about different things at that time you were selling your art correct and I was selling art and books and then yeah. one day we got to talking and she said uh, oh I, I really been writing you know I, I want to be a writer really because I, she loved writing and we're going to get more into that that's what I want to you know I think people don't know your history and it's, it's interesting and uh, so I said, really? And then we ended up getting another uh, person. We all live in Westfield, New York. So we're, we're uh, Westfielders, you know, we're, we're imports, immigrants <laughs> from uh, other places. And then we, uh, we got together and did um, a writer's group. And then Shannon got very, very, very much into it and extremely pro prolific, which we're gonna talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know where she's come and, and it hasn't even I met you 10 years ago but I think you've been writing maybe sort of professionally for the last 10 I mean really seriously for when was your first book published do you remember that year of um I think the first was, book I think it was 2015 I think 15 so we're talking six years because only 21 15 to 21 just prolific writer and you have many how many books you have now I have 55 published. I'm working on my 56, but it's yeah. not, it's not all books. It's uh, short stories and anthologies and novellas and it's just titles, 56 titles. Yeah. Well, 56 times you sat down and started something and finished it, actually finished what she was writing, you know, that is true. and, yes. and published. And they are all published works as well. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And there's trilogies and there's a uh, uh, you also have put them together in, in collections, and I mean, you. She's really uh, dove right in, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, you want me to just continue, or do you do you love? It? You feel like you're being praised and adored. <laughs> I do feel a little weird about this, but yeah, you know, if you want, to, whatever. <laughs> but the, you are you really are the reason that I went with uh, that I went through Amazon. Uh, to, yeah, Amazon. To, mm -hmm. Now, uh, with your experience, so, uh, since you mentioned Amazon, uh, I know over the years you've been, you know, you've been good with Amazon, but you've been frustrated as well. Yeah. Now, generally, how do you feel about Amazon as, as a self-published writer, publishing your own work? I'm so frustrated right now that I would honestly take anything to get out, to get away from oh. them. Wow. They're, they're driving me crazy. And uh, there's nothing I can do to to stop it, to fix it. So, well, what uh, kind of problems are you having with with them? Um, with the paperback books, I was told. Um, let's see, I I realized that a couple of my books were um, marked at a different price than I had put them at, and wow. uh, so I contacted them and let them know. And uh, what they said was they have the right to determine the price of my book. I do not have that right. And that was... Did they reduce the price? Yes. Now, my understanding, I could be wrong about this, is that even though they reduce the price to generate sales, you will still get the same, the same royalty. That would be tough because uh, they, they had one of my books marked as $4.00. Uh, uh -huh. when uh, it costs them four dollars to uh, process the book. Wow, well, because I think I thought that they have done that in the past with other writers. They haven't done it to me, 
Okay. But my understanding was that they, they were just doing it for a short period to generate sales, but I think they would have told you that. They said, you're still uh, yeah, going to get your two ninety nine or whatever you're going to get for it. And, you know, you'll still get what you're supposed to get, but they're going to take the loss. They uh, never just, said that. They never said right. that to me. And I'm, I'm just getting tired of them. They're, yeah. they're really just, it, it's like, uh, they have no one to answer to because they are the, the biggest game in town. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, they, they position, I've been with, I, I published different, many different ways and they were the, they, they, became, they just wiped everyone out of the water. I was yeah. with Ingram and other places, but I mean, the other places aren't, aren't, you know, you gotta pay a lot of money. I mean, you gotta pay a lot of money up front. So I've been very happy with them, but it is, it's, it's, um, I mean, if you get your books published, but that will another thing. We will talk about marketing. That's a whole other. That's that's a long <laughs> topic of conversation oh. in and of its own. And uh, I think all self-published writers struggle with that. I mean, I'm still I'm struggling with it. But you know, I'm getting to the point where you do what I can. And you know, I've been really admiring what you've been doing. I mean, you started oh, a bookstore. Wow. I mean, it's amazing you started this bookstore from literally nothing. I mean, you were knocking on doors because I know that because you knocked on my door. I did, and, I said, and you rejected me. I, I oh. did. I said, I, I can't open the bar for this because I've only been approved to have a business in there for two, after, two, two twice a week, uh, okay. Fridays and Saturdays. Okay. And um, so I, I'd have to go back to the board and I don't know, you know, I don't know what they would say, uh, but you managed somehow to get the uh, YWCA to give you a room. Of course, I was thinking the room was available. I mean, it was available and you the other thing you did, which was really both smart and strange, was you opened during the pandemic. <laughs> yes, right? I, did. I know who was opening during the pandemic, but that was kind of a way in. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I thought too. Yeah. Nobody so was, I mean, we were we were wearing masks the whole time. And you know, I mean, it it was it worked out fine. Uh it did. But it was, you know, who would have thought of that and the other thing is that you thought ahead of time I think I mean I'm, I'm sure you did there's no bookstores in this area exactly, there was a, exactly. there's no was, bookstores that was and, why I wanted to do it uh-huh it was a great idea and this I, you know you're setting yourself and, and people are talking and people are like where's the bookstore you know you it, it is nice we're able to in our small little area we have that uh, what's happening Westfield and the community uh, Chautauqua community board we can put when we're open that really helps all these little small businesses that are opened up. Yeah, and I know you should yep. advantage of that. Yeah. So, uh, so you did that as well. I mean, you've been doing so much and then you had the podcast or whatever you call it. What do you call this thing that we're on? Is it, is, it, a it is a podcast. Yes. Okay. It's a podcast. And then uh, I know you have a huge tw Twitter feed presence and used to, I know. Uh, Not so I don't much anymore, Twitter much, so I don't know. Yeah, not not so much, but uh, yeah, it's yeah. we. I still have friends on there. I yeah. oh, I have I have a fun Twitter story uh, that just happened yesterday. So I was talking to uh, let's see, I posted something about how I got a Keurig for the shop. Um, so now instead of having old coffee that's been sitting there all day to offer to people, I can offer them a fresh cup every day. And oh, wow. uh, this woman said. Hey, if I lived closer to you, I would I would be in your shop every day. And uh, so um, I we ended up chatting, and uh, it she lives in Rochester, which is two hours basically north of us. Right. And she's planning to move to Buffalo, which is about an hour uh, north right. of us, sort of north, you know, whatever north uh -huh. and, Yeah, closer uh, for sure. So uh, it uh, <clears throat> it was just kind of fun because uh, she's planning to go to law school uh, uh, where my husband went to law school and uh, it was just all these random connections and yeah, I just, the randomness is always cool in, in Rochester too so I thought oh wow cool. so yeah very cool just just in case you didn't know wow it's exciting yeah yeah you never know y'all yeah this is the thing you know you put yourself out there and you know, we we went to the farmers market for years. I haven't yeah. gone the last two years because of the pandemic, but uh, we, you were always there too. And yeah. you, you know, you go there, you sit for a lot of hours, but <laughs> all these weird things happen. You know, you meet someone, or someone heard about you, or and so it's really <laughs> nice to get that kind of feedback. Uh, 
when you're selling, you know, selling books is an interesting thing. You know, you put your soul out there, but you know, as I, as I've gotten older, it's like, here's my book, you know, I I'm older, so I'm not as, and I've been doing it much longer, uh, that, you know, I hope I, I like that people like my books, but I'm not devastated if someone says something or right, I've had some right. strange things happen to me too at, at different places, venues and stuff. But let's get back to, I have a list here of things. Oh, now you're scaring um, me a little right now. <laughs> yeah, be afraid, be very afraid. <laughs> okay, when did you know you wanted to be a writer? Um, probably 11th grade. Um, okay. I, I've, I've told you this before. Um, I, I was a liar when I was a kid, like big time liar. Every word out of my mouth should have been questioned. And my parents did a lot of questioning. It was bad. Oh, wow. um, but um, I had a teacher in 11th grade who he really, he was the first teacher to actually pay attention and to, to, uh, to try and understand like why, um, why my work wasn't getting done. And, you know, he oh. was, he was uh, compassionate rather than, uh, you know, just pointing a finger and going, you're a bad kid. Um, that makes the difference. That it does, totally yes. Makes difference. Yeah. But he, he was very, he encouraged me in a way that nobody has ever encouraged me in my entire life. Oh, and wow. uh, my very first book was actually dedicated to Mr. Landy. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, well, that's a great story. Uh, I do remember you 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 talking about someone who, su who was supportive in high school. I don't remember yeah. his name or anything like that. Um, and was he was an English teacher? I take it. Right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. that's what he was. Yeah, and so so uh, that's what made you become made you think about becoming a writer. And when did you? Because when we met, uh, when we started talking about writing before we had the writers group, you said you had. I think you had a lot of start. You had things yeah. started. Yep. And, exactly. Uh, and when did you start right after like high school or right that last year of high school, you started writing and started developing a little like journals of, of writing or pages of writing? Or, journal, I, it was, I or was, snippets I was really, or however you started. Probably. Um, see, I, I would sort of write uh, every once in a while, but I right. didn't really have a story that I wanted to tell. Um, right. But then I, um, I finally found my story. I think I was 23, maybe. Okay. I, mm -hmm. I think I was 23. And it was many moons ago. So it's really hard to remember back in those olden days. It was like um, a lifetime ago, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I wrote this story and um, uh, I looked back at it recently. It is so oh. bad. It's you can't, terrible. <laughs> you can't go back, but it's the best thing to go back <laughs> because you say, oh, I've come a long way. And, and, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and it's something to be proud of. And yeah, uh, I have, I, exactly. I did mine much old. I was much older than you. And I, I wrote a book. It took me two years. It was 200 pages. I still have it. It's on that, you know, the the printer pages that have the holes on the side, the oh. dot matrix thing. Oh, that's yeah. how old it is. And uh, it's it's horrendous. It's so bad. But you know, it's 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 but good to see so that to see yeah. you know how long you how far you've come along. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, now, generally, how long does it take you to write a book? Enough. It really depends. A couple of years ago, I was I was getting books done in like a month. Okay, but, you were doing uh, these that. days, yeah, wow. these days I've slowed down a lot. Well, you're a lot busier too, I think. But yeah, there I is mean, with, that. The, with the bookstore, that's that takes up a lot. I would think it takes up a fair amount of time. It does, yeah. The bookstore, but actually, you know. the audio books are taking up more more time than yeah. anything. Yeah, I want to talk about that as well. We're going to talk. That's like a mark. We'll talk about the audio books because that that's an interesting. That's a fun thing to talk about. Um, so are you a pantser or a plotter? Pantser, you know that. You got, well, maybe uh, with, you with, know, the you writer, kinda... with our writers group, with our writers group, they tried to force me to uh, do a uh, an outline and all that jazz. And mm -hmm. uh, by the time uh, I, I wrote the outline, everything was, 
okay. And uh, by the time I was done uh, working on that story, they're like, yeah, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do the outline anymore. <laughs> well, you know, it depends. Yeah, you know, I think you have to find your own way. And that's yeah, why there yeah. are pantsers and plotters, you know. Right, exactly. Now, because, I mean, I don't want to, uh, uh, everyone writes different kinds of stories right. as well. And we did talk about that. Uh, and in my case, I write mysteries. So, I mean, I can kind of roughly do um, pantser, but there's so many things I have to plant in the story right, right. that it's hard for me. To, at some point, I have to be linear about it and I have to start plotting it. But it, it, I, it depends. Now, with my short stories, I don't do that. With my short stories, I have a line or something. And we want to, I want to talk about that in a minute so I don't forget. I should talk about it right now because I'll forget. <laughs> so you start a story. You're, you're beginning a story. What is it? Is it is it a line, a scene, a character? What gets you, or is it always is, does it change? What gets you into that story? Usually, it depends. It it's yeah. it can be a line. Like I have I have a fantasy. Um, uh, well, had a no, I do. Huh, I do. I have a fantasy uh, trilogy that um I started probably twelve years ago or something like that, mm -hmm. and um. It, uh, your dogs are not happy, are they? No. <laughs> He's going to be quiet, I think, in a minute. Oh, okay. Okay. But uh, it started with, I have this dream about this chick uh, still. Oh, I feel bad for your dog, though. Oh. All right. But anyways, the dream, the dream was uh, this chick standing on the top of a, a cliff, basically, and she was about to be executed. And uh, there was that was the only image from the dream I really remember. Yeah, that's a powerful and, image. Yeah, exactly. And mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, it, it was especially powerful because it was me in the dream. So that was a little creepy. Yeah, that would be. But <laughs> um, I, uh, I started basically looking for, a, looking for a story that would work to weave this image around. And it just, mm -hmm. just kind of came to me as I was, as mm -hmm. I was started writing. Yeah. Yeah, so there's many ways to start a story. Well, of course, yeah. and then a novel is longer, but uh, I know with my short stories, it's sometimes it's just a line or uh, just uh, two people talking, you know, uh, two characters talking. It can begin in many ways. Right, and exactly. I know, but with short stories, I tend to just, you know, I don't think much, I don't plot my short stories because they're, right. they're more of a, you know, they're more of a literary, not literary, I can't say it's more of a, um what, what do you call it like um it's not a romance but there's a name for it. it's like a literary story you can you can kind of go anywhere with it there's nothing to plant in there you just have you just can tell the story you don't have to worry about uh uh multiple um red herrings or right. multiple motivations or motives or all that stuff so anyways um so that's interesting i know another thing that i remember very distinctly from and you mentioned it in one of your podcast was that you love names the names are a huge yes. thing for you yeah, yeah you you are the one who uh you are the one who started calling me the name maven <laughs> yeah well you, you you research names and you learn about their roots and where they come from and where you know their meanings and it's very important for you to have a name that fits the character that fits the story exactly. that yeah. sometimes i have actually uh started a story just because i found a good name Right. Mm -hmm. Names are very important to you. So that's, that's um, interesting. Quick note though, uh your your dog your dog's name is Sadie, right? The the yeah. okay. So uh the name Sadie means princess. Oh <laughs> yeah, she is a princess and that's her right now. <laughs> See? <laughs> okay. She should calm down. It's unusual for her to see she's I'm on this couch and she wants to come up here. Oh I see. See. okay, come on. Come on. <laughs> Okay, so um, photo bomb. Now, I'm gonna put her away if she keeps it up. <laughs> okay, go in the other one. I'll, wait, come on up here. Come on. Come on. <laughs> this is the most entertaining podcast maybe ever. <laughs> well, now she jumped up. Okay, oh, now yeah. I have another question here. So, yes. do you ever get stuck? If you say you never get stuck, I'll have to kill you. I'll just have to go where you're right now. <laughs> if, you, if you never get stuck. Unfortunately, in the last couple of years, I've been I've been very stuck. But it's it's not 
it's not, uh, it's, I'm writing now how I used to write when I first started writing, which is uh, have maybe six or seven uh, things that I have started and oh. kind of work on every once in a while. And then uh, nothing's getting finished. Nothing <laughs> is getting finished. And yeah, it's it's driving me crazy. But yeah, I'm I'm stuck with uh, several of them at this point. Yeah, and, and then I was gonna say, how do you get unstuck? At some point, you just your inspiration kicks in, and you, you just yeah yeah that, that it, you do just kind of have to wait around for it to yeah. happen. But most of the time, I I just do other stuff. I I work on something else, or I uh, listen to a book, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. When you get stuck, there's all kind. Of, you have to figure out how how to get unstuck. You have to figure out what um, what you specifically can do. Like for me, um, I always pay. I I, just, I think of my problem at night and wake up in the morning, and I, I usually have a solution. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and, and if it doesn't work, I try it again the next night or the next night. So that gets me kind of unstuck. And the other thing that gets me unstuck is. Um, reading, you know, reading someone else's work yep. that really helps. Exactly. So that's, that's um, what's the easiest part about writing? The easiest is usually uh, coming up with, uh, free, you know, I write fantasy. So uh, coming up with some kind of uh, fantasy uh, item or creature or something like that. I love that research. I love looking into uh, myths and legends and things like that and trying to uh, weave them through my stories. So mm -hmm. it, it's easy, but it's also complicated and fun. And uh, it's it's my favorite part. Yeah, I think when you, that you identify the fun part, when you're yeah. having, when you're engaged with it or having fun, yes. then it becomes the easiest part, even though it can be challenging. You're yes. into it, you know, you kind of lose track of everything and you get really, you dive deep. And yeah. what's the most challenging part of writing? Where it's, where it's difficult. With name. Like, <laughs> what? Sticking with the name. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know that. With, uh, with the first uh, book that I uh, actually published, uh, I had, uh, oh, let's see, I, I had, given Charlie and Linda uh, the first version of this book and they they gave me advice and I started rewriting the whole uh, the whole story and um, from from that I changed the name uh, of the main character then I changed the name of the main character again then I took out a bunch of characters and uh, changed more names and I still do that I still have that issue where like every time I turn around, I'm like, oh no, that name doesn't work so well anymore. Let's go with this one. Or uh, it, it, yeah. it's so it's hard for me. It's your way of doing it, yeah. yeah. And I know, yeah. of course, we've all done this, uh, you know, the point of view. Well, that was first person, but you know, maybe it should be third person. Maybe, you know, <laughs> you know they just start changing the person around. Uh, yeah, and then you end up with uh, you you find the wrong word uh, or yeah. you know he should be I or I should be he or you know yeah it, it's a big and the verb it changes all the verbs too yeah you know? <laughs> but that's part of the whole thing now what is your typical on a good day what is your typical writing day I mean like if you're on a roll what is, what is your typical writing day as far as you know how do you attend to it. Um, there's always coffee. Um, yeah, Shannon drinks a lot of coffee. She <laughs> loves her coffee. I do. It's great. Yes. Um, but uh, let's see. I there. There's a cup of coffee in front of me. Uh, there's water on the other side. Um, then you know, just uh, like uh, where I'm sitting right now is behind the piano uh, in my in my bookshop, and. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it's, it's kind of my new favorite spot. So the spot is very important. I have a desk at home that is, uh, my spot for home and this is my spot, uh, in the shop. And it's just, if I can get on a roll, if I can actually start, uh, cranking out words, uh, they don't stop, mm -hmm. um, until something interrupts me. Gotcha. Sometimes and it's so 
rarely it's a customer <laughs> but, so, you know. if, so on a typical writing day how many hours would you say you write if it's a good if it's a good writing day um, because I get the impression you must be writing all the time to put out this kind of 52 books I mean are you writing like five hours a day 10 out seven five ten probably nine, nine, nine. between seven and ten. Oh yeah that's if okay it's a good day yeah, but exactly. I, I mean, there's always stuff I have to do or, you know, uh, get distracted and uh, oh, yeah. go on Twitter or Facebook or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I hate that. But uh, <laughs> I burn out after two or three. That's this is oh, my man. Okay. Never, I was never, I could never do the long, the long haul. And it seems like the writers that are prolific are, you know, they're doing more than just two, three hours a day. Three hours yeah, would be yeah. a lot for me. Two hours I can manage. So now future projects that you haven't even what are, what are some future projects that you're up to anything um I, i'm working on at least four books right now um oh. one is um a uh, book three in a trilogy i started several years ago um it's uh it you you've read you've at least you know about um the harry potter books right mm -hmm. yeah okay so uh i read those and i basically came up with my own kind of hogwarts sort of oh, wonderful kind of mm -hmm. it, it's um uh, how do you put this um alternate past so okay. uh when when the revolutionary war uh takes place would have taken place uh, in this world, that's when the Elven Wars uh, actually took oh. place. So America is America, but it's uh, it's a place where uh, elves and demons and uh, trolls and all that jazz, everybody's out in the open. Awesome. So um, uh, then it's a, a boarding school that is uh, set up in Georgia. And, awesome. Uh, it's it it really is I really enjoyed uh that trilogy um so I'm very much looking forward to finally finally finishing it awesome um, but uh I'm also working on book 10 in the Madison Meyer series oh, which yeah. is paranormal mysteries mm -hmm. um I've got another one that's kind of it's closer to horror than it is anything else um it's like um it's called hide and go seek. So a, a person is taken and uh, the their life is threatened uh, by being taken clearly. And uh, the uh, the most important person in their life is supposed to search for them. Wow. So it, that's a great title, hide and seek. It would be a series. That's a, is that like a no, series or just a single yeah. one? Wow. But. I, I kind of hit a wall with that one because the only way to uh, to really show what was going on, a little kid had to be hurt. And I no. think yeah. made me feel well, sick. Maybe they could get a little hurt, not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. Just, he got slapped a little bit and yeah. it just, it, it, I'm uncomfortable and I'm uh -huh. yeah, old. So I, I will get back to it and yeah, I'm just, I'm sad. Poor Zane. He's so cute. All right. But anyway. Poor Zane. Poor Zane. Well, hopefully it won't happen to Zane. Come on. Make it happen <laughs> to someone else. Pick the dog or something. Several um, others too that are, yeah. that are half completed or three quarters completed. So if I actually buckle down uh, and can finish these books, I'll have like six of them that I can uh, have out before May, but well, yeah, there's no way that I can <laughs> probably buckle down and actually get her done. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what advice do you have for writers starting out? Read. That, yeah, Always that read. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it is the thing that will help most in uh, figuring out what you want to do and uh, how you want to do it and good and bad things to either do or avoid mm -hmm. that's great yeah. advice um, okay now we are going to talk a little bit about 
uh, where are most of your sales? And what I mean by that, eBooks, print, or audio? Do you find that one section sells better than another? For a or while, it was awesome. audiobooks. For a while, it was audiobooks. Um, right. But uh, I've had a lot of sales from the shop here. Um, oh, wonderful. So hard copies, print books. Yes, yeah. Yeah, print books. But I, I almost never make sales on Amazon of hard copies. Uh-huh. Almost never. I've, I've had a very rare sale on there, but um, it, it's it's great because being in the shop, uh, people you know pick up a random book and they go, "Hey, that's you, isn't it?" Yes, yes, it is, and they actually like talking to the author. It's yeah, weird. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, I've been publishing. Has- yeah, I've been publishing for a long time, long a little bit longer. Two hundred three was my first book, so that's been almost twenty years. Oh, wow. And all my, I mean, I have sold online, you know, but mostly it's in person, you know, yes. and I, I, some of the venues you would never suspect the place I sold the most books, uh, was I went, it was a, an RV park and they had a, they had a meeting room at an RV park yeah. and, uh, someone listened. I went, I used to also give talks about writing and publishing. And so yeah, someone yeah. came up to me and said, you know, uh, I'm staying in an RV park. We have a, a you know, a, a room, you know, community room, why don't you come and, and talk about your books and, you know, and talk about what you just told us. And we would love to hear about everything. So I went there and I sold like 20 books in two hours. So it was That's amazing awesome. because they were, they were, they were uh, locked in. They weren't going anywhere. Yeah. yeah. And they really had nothing else to do. And they were That's readers awesome. because most of the time, this was before the internet, they weren't, the internet was around, but it wasn't as much as popular as the Wi-Fi wasn't everywhere. So they right. were readers right. as well. And uh, so that was, it's, it's funny, there's these little pockets of yeah, uh, places. Yeah. And we sold at the farmer's market. I sold yep. books at the farmer's market and yep. so did you. That personal thing. And then giving talks is helpful uh, to sell. But it seems like in person is is the best way to go. Yep. Yeah, Very as true. far as I'm concerned, you know, as far yeah. as that's concerned. Um, I did also do one audio book and it was fun. I have found this, uh, I, did, I did it through Audible like you did. Yeah. And it's fun to listen to your books when they're on, when they're audio. Yes, they sound like is. movies. It sound, mine sound like a movie to me. <laughs> that was great. And I got some sales, but I can't figure out how to keep the sales going, you know? Yeah, how to, yeah you know, same here. Yeah. And I think, I think you just got to throw a lot of money at it maybe and know how to do stuff. But, you know, I don't even know if you can, I mean, you got to know someone who knows what to do. And right. I think there's a lot of people out there that say they know what to do, but they don't, I don't know if they know what to do. They're just, you know, they'll charge a hundred bucks and I'm not sure what they do. So see, I, I did do a paid, uh, a paid marketing thing, uh, with, uh, my last, uh, book, my last audio book. And, uh, okay. it was a month long. It was, uh, 40 bucks and I sold one audiobook oh, oh that's not good no. and I I don't know I mean it's not it's not their fault because they're doing what they're supposed to do it's just right. people weren't interested so I've got a well, the thing is you're up against the big money you know you're yeah. up against you know all the uh, uh commercial traditional publishers as well yes. that's where yeah. all the money's coming from and they get you know they get a bigger uh, uh part of the pie um so uh, how about social media? How do you think that works for you? I mean, I don't know, Facebook, do you sell books from Facebook? You think you Sometimes. sell books? It, it depends. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, most of the sales that I make, people see uh, my posts about my books and they come into the shop for, oh, right. uh, cause I mean, the, the locals, obviously. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, social media is good to be on, but it's not all. Right. Now, so you're in with the why and how long is, do you hope this, do you have like a yearly thing going with them or how does that work as far as? Uh, no, we pay them uh, through, uh, through the sales of books. Okay. So it's however they get paid, however much. So a percentage of whatever they get. Yeah. yeah. They get a hundred percent of the used books and then 25% of the local author's books. Oh, nice. Oh, that yeah. seems like a reasonable thing. Yeah. And so, they're, I mean, they're happy with what's happening. I think so. I hope so. I mean, didn't, didn't you say they just put heat in your... Uh... They did, yes. 
Yeah, so they're not trying to read something. It's nice. <laughs> um, so let's see. Uh, I think that's kind of what I had listed as, as um, now. So I know, I think, I mean, I know the answer to this. You're happy that you've been self-publishing. I mean, is that, how do you feel about self-publishing? Are you looking for a traditional publisher? I'm actually kind of considering it now. I didn't okay. think I would ever consider a traditional publishing because I don't like the fact that a traditional publisher takes 90% of your profits. Uh-huh. Um, I don't like that at all, but I'm so sick of Amazon that I, I want out. Okay. But so what's, I can't, what's the plan? Is there a plan? Do you have anything in mind? Well, see, what I need to figure out is um, if it's better to unpublish through Amazon and then try and republish through a traditional oh, publisher or just leave them as they are and then try and do the querying thing which will suck your soul away i know <laughs> well it takes time that's that's yeah. the problem but the, i see the advantage you have the huge advantage you have is you are so prolific and we talked about this in the writers group i mean they are looking for those those kind of a writer who's can crank out copy and you right. can do that no question about it Hopefully. now that's an interesting thing i mean uh yeah i don't know i don't know what the answer to that yeah. is yeah Probably won't because I say this all the time. Like I've been frustrated with Amazon for a while. So uh -huh. I'll probably end up just, you know, going whatever and uh, just sticking with them. But uh, I'm, I'm to a point where I'm, I really want to try something else. Yeah. So, well, it can hurt. Yeah, exactly. The question is, you have kind of, I mean, I think that, you know, uh, you think that Harry Potter is, you know, saturate the market, but you know, <laughs> they like things that are like other things. They, they something successful, they're open to something similar too. That's why there is certain genres, you know, and that, you know, right. and uh, I think that idea seems really interesting. Yeah. And that'd be something brand new, you know, it'd be something brand new that, you know, rather than publish it yourself, maybe get one of those books and say, you know, you have two more in the hopper or something. I don't know, that might be, might be a nice way to, try to get an agent. You need yeah. an agent first, I think, I don't know. I think that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I, I mean, they have, the thing is you can, you can get small publishers because I've, I've talked to a lot of people over the years and I know people that have gone with small publishers. Yes, now, there's, that's, there's, that's my goal. My goal is okay. small. Yeah. If and, I do. Uh, yeah, so that's, you know, that'd be worth it. Usually, I don't know if they have, uh, I think you get more, you get more than 90% or more than 10%. 10%. I think so. Yes, I think so. Um, and it'd be worth it. Yeah, you could try that. And uh, they are they are opening up those those small publishers are coming are, are coming into their own. I my one book was published by a small publisher, but oh, then yeah? it wasn't selling. Uh, Spots blind. It was a short story collection. Okay. And uh, it was it was it was on Amazon and everything. And but I don't know if the sales were that good. Eventually they went under. I mean, they, you know, because they're dealing with, they, they, could, they could find the material to publish and they spent okay. a certain amount of money with the publishing and the covers and all that. But then I think they had trouble marketing, you know, because they didn't have all that much money to market. For the right, right. Yeah. See, I, the, think, I think going with a small press uh, type publisher, I think I would still be doing uh, the majority of the marketing. And yeah, I'm, you would for sure. I'm not that great at it, but at least I would know what was happening. And yeah. I like designing my book covers. I really uh -huh. enjoy it. It's my favorite part of, uh, of getting a book. At, that was something I forgot to mention. If I'm stuck, I design a book cover and it, yeah, it helps to, to yeah, it helps get to you on track, things sure. up. Yeah. 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 Designing book covers is so much fun. Yeah. yeah. I forgot about exactly. that. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. So, uh, so we'll see where you are in another couple of years, where you've come and where, where you've gone. I know there was a period, there was a, a time, Shannon, I don't know if you know about this, uh, people who are watching, uh, that she did have an interest to do a movie. You did a movie <laughs> contract. I mean, yeah. you did, you had signed a movie contract. It didn't go anywhere, but yeah, uh, it, it was interesting. I mean, that someone was interested in the, the first, was it the first Madison Myers? Yes, yep. It, it was the first one. 
And it was yep. a college student. Oh, I don't know if it was a project of his. No, or... he wasn't college. He was oh, uh, he 28. Oh, okay. And he read the book. He loved it. And he wanted to do a movie. And so you worked no, on that. His while. mom read the book. His okay. mom read the book and wanted him to do it. So uh, I think he, I think he uh, did the, um, he did the uh, script grudgingly. Oh. And uh, I, it, yeah, it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, there was interest in it. I mean, the, yeah. he yeah. loved yeah. it and he was, gave him a project. I mean, yeah. I think a lot of, I mean, a lot of things fizzle out. I mean, there's interest in something and it changes. And, right, exactly. Uh, there's a lot of, I mean, I've heard a lot of other stories about people, you know, making something, a company comes by, public production company. Uh, they sign a contract and little do they know they signed it for, uh, you know, after production costs, they will get a percentage. Well, right. what do you know? Protection costs were more expensive than, and there was no, there was no money to be had because yeah. they could move around the numbers and stuff like right. that. Right, right, right. So it's just, it, it, I was, I was told if you're offered a book and a movie deal, think about what they're going to give you up front and take that because if yeah. they say after production, after this, after that, then you could end up, because they can mess around with those numbers. Very true. They, they I got a dollar. That, so I don't know. I got a dollar. He, he, I, uh, he bought the, oh, uh, uh, rights. Yeah. He bought the rights for right me for a dollar. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. he told me that it was, uh, it was supposed to be just a, uh, a figurative dollar. That's not the word. Uh, token just to just to hold yeah. it in place yeah token. yeah basically yeah uh but uh I was like okay I'm gonna frame the dollar that'll work he's like well you, you don't actually get a dollar <laughs> oh it was a okay dollar. his was mom his mom talked to uh, talked him into giving me a dollar oh jeez. No. <laughs> okay well you come across stuff like that but that's a, you know that's a good story it's a good uh, <laughs> Uh, the so you, you had interest in a movie uh, it didn't work out of course. Yes, and then yes. um so you've been doing the audiobooks you've been doing uh you open your own bookstore i mean you did so much in, in such a short period of time yeah yeah and you have I ideas did, i'm i'm doing a couple of uh i'm doing a couple of library events uh to promote Good. the audiobooks so i've got uh one in ripley uh where i'll be doing um uh me and my narrator will be uh uh, coming via uh, zoom oh and, wonderful yeah so he'll he'll read uh uh from the light bearer book i think uh and um is this sweeney is this Swe the yes. sweeney guy? yeah he's good he was good he was very good oh you heard you know what he did which i literally liked he, well he has a beautiful voice but he's yeah, yeah. very slow you know yes. that yes. makes all the difference when you're slow just just if you're one of do an audio of your own book or something. Just speak slowly. Slow down. You make fewer mistakes that way, I think, too. I don't know. Probably true. Yeah. Well, uh, the um, the other one that I'm doing is uh, Lauren Rodriguez. Uh, uh -huh. She she does the Madison Meyer series, and she's okay. uh, the. I think I heard her too. Yeah, she was good. Yeah. You did an interview with her as well. As yeah. well. Oh yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. Now and she's she's, she's very good. Oh, yeah. Huh? These podcasts. Are there, are they, um, and can you see them? Or are they gone once they're gone? Do you have a um, place where people can go see? Well, these are my podcasts. You know, I've done, you know, 50 of them. Here you can go, like a backlist, like where they can go and watch these or no? Well, uh, for the um, the ones that I put on YouTube, the ones that are recorded via Zoom, uh, those okay. are on YouTube forever, so far as I oh, know. Oh, wow, wonderful. So um, this will go but, on YouTube? I'm sorry? This, this one will go on YouTube? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll put a link on my YouTube to this to this one then. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. But the, but I the, know the podcast I itself something. is a uh, Buzzsprout, and they delete uh, they delete uh, after three oh, months. Buzzsprout. Yeah, I was. Yeah. yeah, I use them. I think I did one or one. I did something with Buzzsprout. Okay. So okay. you throw it up on on YouTube. What's the YouTube uh, site? I don't really know the the site itself. It, you just look up Shannon Reaver. Okay, so it'll show up Shannon Reaver. Okay, good. Yep. Wow, Shannon, too much. You have done so much in such a short period of time. And now, I'm sure it doesn't feel like a short period of time. Maybe it, does. it doesn't. You're correct. It doesn't feel like a short period. It doesn't. You are correct. <laughs> well, you've been very busy. And, uh, you know, very, you're still young. 
I, you're still young. You are still young. I started writing when it was maybe, and maybe you're a little bit older than when I started writing, and it was a long time ago. But you're still, uh, you still can go quite a ways. Uh, yeah. There's still a lot more to learn. Really? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I appreciate. I think I don't. I have no idea what time it is. How long we've been talking? Well, it is twelve twelve, and the shop. Wow. Is for twelve minutes. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so um, I'm glad I had this opportunity. I'm glad I suggested it. And, you, you know, I, do watch, I don't watch all, I don't watch the whole thing all the time, but I do see it. And I said, oh, let's see who's on now. And it's fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you enjoy them. Yeah. So continued success. Continued and, for uh, success to you too. Thank you. And I hope to see you maybe this summer. I don't know, try to get out more. I don't, I'm not going out anywhere pretty much. So I pretty much all about <laughs> home all the time. So maybe yeah. uh, I don't, you, you won't, did you do the market at all this year? I did, yes. Oh, you did? Okay. Yep, we uh, we yeah. did it uh, for the shop. So uh, oh, I had smart. To yeah. on top and then uh, use books on the bottom. Awesome. Oh, that was great. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Shannon. Well, thanks so much for uh, uh, talking with me and I hope people find it interesting. And I certainly found it interesting. <laughs> And next time we do it, I'll, I'll talk about, you know, your personal life or something. <laughs> um, I'm no, sick I, that day. That's a joke. <laughs> that's, that's a joke. Oh, good. For oh, you. Yeah. Ah, all right. Well, it was okay. great to see you. Okay. We'll see each other maybe in all the right. summer. Okay. Okay. See you Bye -bye. later. Bye. Thanks for watching.